So I'd like to introduce our guest tonight, Miss Nancy Soleri. Thank you so much for being a part of the show tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. So for our listeners that don't know about you, um, can you give a little bit about what you're about and uh, what you do? Absolutely. So uh, what is Nancy Soleri about? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> um, you know, uh, what I will say is like everybody else, you know, I, I, I grew up, I uh, was born into a family where it was loving, but I, I saw my parents go through divorce, uh, experienced domestic violence. Um, my sisters and I were all diagnosed with an eye condition, uh, which has us all legally blind today. Wow. I saw my mom go through breast cancer. And so what I do is over time in various careers eventually led me to creating my business called Living Full Out. And what I learned from a young age is I was a good listener. I had an empathetic heart, and I just found a way to make a career out of it in terms of being that same sounding board for others and, and kind of being that springboard for people to jump from and, and go after their dreams. And the last thing I'll say to couple that is in life, even when you have everything figured out or you feel like you kind of have at least a couple boxes checked, yeah. life will just keep on going. So later in my life, I encountered financial stress, miscarriages, infidelity, sexual harassment, oh and, and I just shared that with you because the thing is, is what I've learned at the end of the day is you have to be able and willing to handle the unexpected. They're always going to come. So that's another thing that I focus on uh, with the clients I serve. Wow. <laughs> that is, I I have to say to our listeners, like I said, I was thrown back when I first actually read about your story when you had let me see it. But for somebody that's gone through that much struggle like you have, was there ever a time where you just said like you wanted to quit, like enough was enough? Like, I mean, going through all that, like got you to this point. Oh, uh, there are so many times. There are so many times. Um you know, I, I wish that I could pick up a piece of paper and read it, or I wish I could jump in my car and drive. But being legally blind, that's not possible. And some of the, the moments that make me gulp or where I feel a kind of tension in my heart or my throat is when, when I can't verbalize what I see or how I feel. And sometimes that's true, I mean, with me, with my eye condition, but that might be true overall. Like you might have people in your audience right now that are dealing with a breakup or divorce. Yeah. And it's really hard to flush out of our body, our mind, the woulda, coulda, shoulda, the what ifs, the, the negative self-talk. And so we all go through it. And the whole goal of a show like yours and is that as a community, we're able to be that outlet for people. So I really encourage everybody listening today, you might have your own challenges that you're going through, but you could absolutely be that outlet for one person today. Just wow. pick up the phone, meet with them in person, let them bring all their concerns to you. And if you can, if you can be the placeholder for that, you will give them great relief. Now, um, what you're doing it and everything that you've been doing so far, because um, I was seeing that you also, uh, you had a, you got a chance to be a uh, part of Good Morning America. Um, tell our listeners a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, again, I guess I'll go back a little bit to that 10-year-old girl that experienced all that stress and hardship early on. You know, like so many of us, I remember watching the Oprah show, and I remember thinking to myself, you know, how could I take my natural skills of listening and giving advice and, and, and how could I, how could I do that? Right. How could I do that? <laughs> but it's not, it's not easy. Right. So when I went to college at the university of Oregon, I got a degree in broadcasting and psychology. Awesome. And the, and, and as a side note, the one thing I will say, the positive of my eye condition is when I got that diagnosis at 16 it was really like game on. Like, I don't know when the lights are going to go out. Like, I need to make sure that I go into my dreams today. And so when I went into college, I went in with that, that goal, that dream. And um, so when I graduated, I had done 
eight internships in my college career. I had wow. produced, I had DJed, I had done so many things that when I graduated, I was able to get the opportunity to go and, and support in terms of production at Good Morning America. So I went off to New York and, you know, here I was just kind of checking another bucket list item. And eventually, after being in New York, um, I got another uh, gig, another job working at Entertainment Tonight in L.A. So I went from New York to L.A. Yeah. And then after that, I guess the moral of the story is I was seeing all these great professionals who who were, you know, doing what I wanted to do. But it was about finding out who was Nancy. It's about becoming an original, not being Oprah, not being all these other personalities. But how could I be a unique one? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, like, would you, like you were saying a little bit, just to piggyback off of what you were saying, you were saying, like, you wanted to know what Nancy was about. You didn't want to be like Oprah. You didn't want to be like them. Did it take you a while to kind of, with all the struggle you were going to, to find out where you were, to find out where Nancy was or where she was going? Completely. Oh, my gosh. Like, you nailed it. Because... Back in the Good Morning America and Entertainment Tonight days, that was in my early 20s, and my vision was changing. Like, I almost felt like I couldn't read a full line. I could see two words of the sentence, but not the whole sentence. And, you know, seeing in dark studios or dark sound booths, it just became kind of tricky. And I jumped around a little bit. Um, I was not really sure how I was going to keep up reading teleprompters. So then I decided to follow a second dream. I went into the music industry, and I loved it. I recorded an album. I performed. It was just a great time. But the music industry wasn't a perfect fit either. I didn't see myself, like, on the road my whole life. And some of the characters, (laughs) the managers, the producers, were not exactly in alignment with my own values even. And so I then transitioned out of that, and I went into real estate, and I oh, was wow. a top producing realtor. Well, you're the woman of uh, many talents. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Wow. I am. And then after real estate, I opened Living Full Out, my company. But back to your question, each of those careers taught me how to become an original, taught me who Nancy was. That's awesome. And so that's why today when I coach people on business development – I'm using my business development hat. When I'm coaching people on life coaching, then I'm, um, I'm speaking from the heart and I'm, I'm, I'm putting all my effort into getting them over that hurdle. So all of the jobs, all of the careers, all of the life experiences that even your listeners are going through now, they will all layer on to each of us becoming the best version of ourselves we can be. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I see, as I was reading everything, I heard your, like, what you were saying, <laughs> like, you're a motivational speaker, you're, you've been on Good Leader, Good Morning America, and a realtor, and you're an accomplished speaker, and I'm just sitting here like, and I hope our listeners will be like, okay, you're going through struggles, but there are ways for you to get through things, like, especially with me, like, with where I am now, as far as with my show, doing this for three years, and yeah, it was, there was a couple times that, even my wife knows that I was ready to just give up. Like we actually, we took a break for I think three or four months just to, for me to get my head together. And I mean, it's nice to know that there are other people out there that did have that struggle. Like it, it, you wanted to find the place where you were at. And that's where I'm very happy that you, even though you went through all this stuff, man, I always tell people this on the show, there's always a reason for everything that happens. It, even though things are bad, but you've turned the struggle that you've went through and you've actually literally turned it into something that can help and uh, what's the word like uh, nurture and help other people who are going through those same things. Because there could be people right now listening that could be like, hey, uh, I wonder if she's gone through this or if she's gone through that. And then they hear that they that you've gone through it and you're still making it now after as many years as you've been doing it and you're still there. And well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, you know, I wanted to kind of uh, jump on board with something that you just kind of referenced, and I hope that this helps the audience. But, oh, go ahead. Um, but in my world, and I'm sure yours as well, because we both host shows and we speak and all that, in my world, I look at every challenge as a potential story in a speech, because that's my job is to that's convey a message through a story. 
But what I want everybody to understand is whether you're going to a Super Bowl party, whether you're getting together with a handful of friends, whether you're meeting a stranger in an office, we all want to become storytellers because it's not the accolades. It's not that I have this title, I won that award. That isn't what inspires people. It's the stories. It's the common circumstances that we all can relate to. And so I just kind of urge everybody to become their own storyteller in their own way. And it might be that you just tell stories to strangers. It might be to your friends. But that, that's what kind of keeps us all connected. Wow, that's awesome. Um, actually, one thing I meant to say earlier to you, um, I noticed the name of your show is Living Full Out. What's actually funny about that is because uh, me and another lady uh, who is actually a counselor for, the, for where I live at Baltimore City for kids, she's been doing it for 10 years, uh, me and her were actually doing a show. We had, uh, went through two seasons. Our show was called Living Out Loud. And it was interesting when I saw yours and I was like, wow, that is, <laughs> that's a coincidence that that's close to what ours was. And literally what you were talking about and what she's dealing with, like we had to, we had to actually end the show because um, of her job that she was doing. But um, I'm glad that you're able to come on here and actually talk about your story um, like, I know people probably hear so much stuff from people and they're like, oh, well, this person didn't go through so much. That person didn't go through so much. Do you ever get to that point where people ever say to you, uh, because of where you're at now, do you think you're better than everybody? Do, do you, have you ever had anybody ever say that to you, even though of all the struggle that you've gone through and you're making it and you're being successful now? You know, what? it's so funny that you say that because... You know, I get a lot of loving emails and phone calls and that kind of thing. But then I will get messages from some people that are just rude. (laughs) And in life, you're going to get that. Uh, I had this random person the other day email me, and he was like, why are you looking off camera? Get a teleprompter. Now, clearly, he did not research who he was emailing because (laughs) a blind person can't see a teleprompter, right? And so sometimes you have to take what people give you with a certain grain of salt. Mm-hmm. You know, is is what they say of any value to you? And yes. it, for that, that one wasn't to me. So yeah. <laughs> then you just set it free and you let it go, right? And there's always going to be that person who's in a bad mood. And again, feel sorry for them because we're not sure what got them in such a bad mood. Yeah. Release it and move on. What I've gotten really good at is just, again, just – just literally waking up every day, giving the day my all, and then going to bed with peace that I did my best. That's what, And it's going to yep. make some people happy and some people not. But, uh, you know, at least I can look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, you know, good job, kiddo. I like who you've become. Yep. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes it just has to be that simple. We're never going to please everybody, those expectations that others have for us. They can have them, yeah. but ultimately, you, I, your audience, we are the ones that kind of steer our life. It's up yep. to us. That's right. Mm-hmm. And yep. when, like one of the things, and like you were just saying, like when you first started and everything, and you got those first emails from people saying, like giving those remarks, like how how did it make you feel during that time? Were you kind of were you a little discouraged when you first started doing that? Like because like now you're to the point where it's like okay, it's brushed off your shoulder. There's Maybe they're just having a bad day or whatnot. But some of the emails that you got before when you were first starting, did you feel discouraged when they, uh, when you got emails like that? Great question. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know that in my early career I got that, those sort of emails. Okay. I'm so publicly out there now that I guess people feel comfortable doing that. But, <laughs> but, but, but early on, though, I did – I did struggle with how I was going to do this, you know, because people, speakers or hosts or everybody who could see, they could do things themselves, but I could not. So I had to hire people to do things I couldn't see, or I had to build a team. Maybe I had interns, you know, whatever. And so over time, what really helped me get from A to B was building a support team. Oh, and, wow. and I think a team is really important. Yes. A team could even be a, a husband, a wife. It could be friends. It could be volunteers. It could be people that you pay. But I, I, don't, I don't know anybody who gets to where they want to go 
without a team. I mean, even if you're a parent, right? Yes. You have a team. You have a nanny. You yes. have a babysitter. <laughs> you have a spouse, right? You have a, 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 you know, maybe your own parents, right? I'm just saying that, you know, nobody does it alone. So don't feel don't feel bad if you have to ask for help because that's what it's all about. I, I'm sure you feel the same way, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? You, yep. no, and so, if, and anybody who says they do it all themselves, they're lying. Yeah, yeah. they're lying. Definitely. They have support. I promise you. I can yep. definitely tell you the first part, the first year of me doing this, I tried doing it on my own and not having that support system. That did not work out too well. And then my wife got involved and I had other friends that helped to get involved. And now we've actually, we've evolved over the years. So it is, like you were saying, it is good to have a support team of somebody to at least help you to keep that motivation. Cause sometimes you lose focus on, you start thinking, okay, well, people aren't responding. So this is about me, but it's, it's not about just you. It's about everybody who you're trying to help. Cause sometimes people lose focus when they do shows. And I think that's what I see a lot of times on TV. When you see like people who are like very popular out there and they try to make it more about them than making it about their audience. And sometimes the audience kind of sees that and it's like, okay, well, is this person all about themselves? Are they in it just for the money? Or are they legitimately here to help other people? And I think that's a, that's a lot of times that people struggle with when they do these type of things, when they struggle with their careers and with like with you and me actually wanting to help people compared to someone who's making tens of millions of dollars to help people. They're being paid to do it. But for us mm-hmm. who have gone through it, it's something that we want to give back to the community to help out. And I think that's a lot of time. That's what people forget. I agree completely. And, you know, I'll also share, you asked me, you know, about kind of the hard days or the times that I maybe have been insecure about doing something. Yes. I mean, I, even in the last several years, a uh, few years ago, in fact, um, I, I had applied for a speaking engagement, and initially I applied just to speak for an hour, okay. and after reading all my content, they're like, this is great. We'd like you to speak for four hours. Oh, wow. Now, <laughs> if, if you're a blind person, you can't look at your PowerPoint and stay on course, right? Yeah. You can't look at index cards and stay on course. So I had to get resourceful, and the reason I'm sharing this story with everybody is because, you know, you'll have to sometimes in life find little shortcuts or get resourceful and find ways to get to where you want to go, kind of being creative. And so when I got this gig to speak for four hours, I had to get creative. So I went to Michael's, which is a craft store, and I bought 36 different little pieces. Oh, wow. If I had a story that related to a cross, I bought a cross. If I had a story, I had wow. a story that related to my trip to Paris, I got a little Eiffel Tower, like almost like a little uh, ornament for a tree. Or I got like, I, there was something that had to do with the fact that I wake up at 4 a.m. and I got the number four. And wow. it's not like I could see the four, but I could feel the four. It's not like I could see the Eiffel Tower, but I memorized the feel of it. So on a table next to me during this presentation, I had all those 30-plus little, you know, tools for me to help keep me on track. And, and that allowed me to hit right on the mark my four-hour speech. Wow. But I had to get resourceful. That's awesome. And that's a, yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. I, <laughs> we, we've done shows that long, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, okay, so what am I talking about next? What am I supposed to do next? And like we had done, I think the longest show we did, which uh, we did it at uh, at our mall that we have here. Uh, we were helping Fuel Fund of Maryland do uh, raise money for people that didn't have heat, and we did a four hour show there. And we thought we were only going to do an hour, but we ended up being out in the cold and being outside for four hours doing a show live. And I think doing that and trying to figure out what to say, it was like I guess the stuff was flowing, but that. That is a good idea. That is a good tip. And that's something I'm going to take too because <laughs> I would have never thought of that to actually do something like that, to actually get things that would refer to your life on what you did. Because especially, like you said, speaking four hours, that that can be a long time trying to figure out what to talk about. 
<laughs> well, I think I think props are great. And I mean, that's just me giving a speech and having these 30-something props. But for your audience, think about having props in, in life in general. Yeah. Have a couple props at your desk, something that inspires you. And when you hold it, it reminds you of why you're doing what you're doing. Exactly. You know, have a prop in your car. So when you're stressed out in traffic, you can hold that prop. Maybe it's a picture even. And it brings it full circle of, gosh, I need to, you know, just drive carefully and, you know, I'll get home eventually, right? Yep. So props are very valuable to keep us on track. That's awesome. So what is, uh, I always ask our guests towards the end of the show, what is a goal that you are trying to make with what you're doing now? What's a goal that, or a mission that you have for what you're doing now in the end? Great question. Um, again, everything in my life is really done with the idea of, you know, how can we relate to each other? How can we, you know, support others in, in what they want to do in their endeavors and their dreams? Yeah. And so for us, because technology keeps changing and, and different ways of new media keep changing, it's about constantly staying on the cutting edge of, you know, how can we reach out to folks? And I know that you get me on this one because the thing is, is we want to support you when you're in the car or at the gym. Yep. But so that's going to be one delivery method. But then we want to support people, you know, visually. That's another delivery method. Some people don't want the audio or the visual. They want to, they want to read. Yeah. So then we create blogs and eBooks or so it's just finding a way for us to meet people where they are and give them the tools to stay motivated in that way. Exactly. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, like I said, I want to thank you so much for being on tonight's show and doing this, reaching out to me. Because um, like I said, this is the whole point of uh, Straight Talk with Stan, um, is that it gives people who have stories and inspiration and motivational stories to tell their story on what they went through to help other people because like I always tell our listeners you never know what story you're going to hear it could be you never know when you listen to a show if what somebody's saying could be something that you're going through and they'd be like oh wait a minute I'm going through that too and this person is but they're still making it so I want to especially thank you for your carriage and for your motivation and inspiring people to keep going because whether people say it to you or not, there are people out there that are inspired by your words, inspired by what you do. And I'm hoping that uh, through what you're doing that it does help and inspire uh, the new listeners or the people that are out there that are going through and struggling with those issues that you struggle with and the struggles that we all deal with day to day because none of us are perfect. We all go through things every day. So I want to thank well. you so much for that. Well, thank you very much. And, you know, I do warmly welcome your listeners to come to livingfullout.com. You know, I'm happy to help and, and just, you know, be that place for you to come. Um, at the same time, you know, just remember always to be that original. And, you know, you, you referenced earlier about, you know, all the different things I've accomplished, and I really appreciate that. But at the heart, I'm always going to be that 10-year-old girl. And I think we always have to remember that, you know, we're just all somebody's brother, sister, mother, you know, and that's really what it's about. Oh, and one last thing. Um, how can people get in touch with you? How can people listen to your show? Uh, where can they go to do that? Great question. So we, we have a lot of different outlets for where our show is distributed, but if they want to go to livingfullout.com, they can hear the radio show uh, every Saturday. Uh, we have it live, and then we have a ton of shows there for people to plug into and awesome. hear. Uh, we're on all the social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and we're storytellers. That's what we become really good at. So we share a lot of inspirational stories on our platforms. And so we just invite you to join us and be a part of that Living Full Out movement. That's awesome. Guys, you heard it straight from her. Thank you so much, Nancy, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Guys, make sure you check Nancy out on the web, on social media. Get to know her, guys. Find out what she's about because there's so much to her. And I'm so happy that we were able to have her on the show tonight. So thank you so much. So thank you so much, Nancy, for being on tonight's show. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll be right back here on Straight Talk with Stanton K. Bell.